Hey, and welcome to Glue Friday. <laughs> Woo, I'm having a nice zooming day. I swear. Look, I, I hope, and you know what? You, some of you were part of my first ever, first ever commercial announcing the glue broadcast so it's, it's it's really about um having a ball getting used to the new technology and and making it work for me remember technology is here to work for us we don't work for technology so don't be afraid of technology how could you be afraid of something that works for you something that was created you know should the should the carpenter be afraid of the wood mm, i just thought of that one but yeah don't be afraid of it it's made for us so let's make it work for us cool Great. So uh, we got less than two minutes to go for our broadcast. And I've got, first of all, I got some great breaking news <laughs> for those of you who are going to be on the live broadcast. I got some great breaking news about Glue Wednesday. About Glue Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but I want to wait till we got, you know, at least start the, the official broadcast, even though you could be watching it on the, the stream. Uh, you know, you'll still get it. But this this one, I, I think I want somebody to be here when I announce this one. I, th I think that's a cool thing to do. Yeah, that's a cool thing to do. And so since and so, since it's a cool thing to do and since I do cool things, I'm going to let that happen. All right. I'm going to let that happen. OK, let's see if I was able to do what I thought I was going to be able to do. It looks like I ha I am very cool. Oh, man, look. Let me tell you one thing that I've already done. Uh, I've already got it set up to where I can be one of the participants in the session. Now, that's one of the things we got less than a minute for the message. That's one of the things we learn in Zoom. If you're doing a seminar or, or meeting, you should always have another um, computer going, a backup in case you lose your connectivity. So th these are the little things that you learn in presenting. And so, uh, so I've actually got me as a potential. Oh, Ray, hey, see now, for instance, see your house. Even though I don't see your name, I see your thumbs up, your, your heart on the other on the other screen. See, <laughs> so already technology is working for me. Hey, all right, there you go, Haas. Now you came in. Oh, but now that's interesting. I don't. You're not coming in on my um on on the regular thing. I wonder if that has something to do with it. I hope I didn't mess it up. By 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 logging in on my other screen, but perhaps I did. Ah, interesting. See, we just learned something new. While I'm doing the broadcast, I've got me up. Oh, there you go, Vic. Yeah, Vic just came up over here. I don't know what happened. The house, house, yours didn't come up, but Vic's came up on on both screens. But I see the thumbs up and the like. Okay, well, look, let's roll. Look, first of all, those of you, if this is your first time. This is Glue Friday, which was born from Glue Wednesday, which was the original broadcast. And Glue Wednesday, I found out, I always like to introduce by saying Glue Wednesday comes from people saying that Wednesday is hump day and that hump day was a cliche. And, and but how I really came up with um, Wednesday being the glue rather than the hump. I finally did the research. And let me tell you, hump day, apparently, I, I Googled it. And it says, apparently, the term hump day began in 1965, when allegedly a guy named Roy Mann coined the phrase while standing around the water cooler at a DuPont plant. <laughs> so there you go. That's where hump day came from, from a guy named Roy Mann working for the company DuPont in 1965. Wow. When I was 10 years old. Okay, so what were you doing in 65? See, a lot of things we take for granted. Sometimes we think things are really old and they're not, you know, uh, or maybe we're really old. Okay, what you what you what you want to do? Okay, but yeah, it was it was quite a while ago, quite a while ago. So yeah, Vic, meanwhile, you did make it this time, and and I thank you for coming back. So here's the deal. Here's what I got coming. Oh, and I can see. Oh man, oh this is even better. I where I see I see Vic's on there. Oh, is that Nancy? Uh oh, oh oh hey what's up Bethy I see my Bethy's on there as well oh Vic now that's interesting yours didn't come up this time on the second one the first one but I see you made another comment let me see if I move that if that has anything to do with it no I can't figure out well I tell you what it's so interesting I can see your comment there's your comment Vic saying excellent yeah okay it's just a time delay on it. 
Well, that's cool to know that the one that you're on is getting me faster than the one that I'm on. But let's roll, okay? Here's what I'm going to do today. I'm putting my foot on the GLUE series, the, the G-L-U-E series is what I'm calling that, where each letter of the message, since I'm now doing GLUE Wednesday, Friday, and Monday, each, each letter of the word GLUE is going to be our focus uh, our featured letter for the next message. So on uh, Wednesday, we did the G. Today, we're focusing on the L. So Monday, the U will be the focus letter. So if you want to get a word into the next uh, message and be one of my co-authors, a word that begins with the U, just put it in the thread. Just put that word in the thread and I'll get that word in there. And see there, Vic, you're excellent. I put that up because when we go to next Wednesday, the letter will be E. So we'll probably get the word excellent in there too, but you don't get to submit that one until Monday. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to focus on the letter L. If you've got a word that begins with the letter U and you want it to be in Monday's rest, just put it in the thread. Okay, good. All right. So I, the words that people gave me today uh, for our L were are looking, laugh, light, and longevity. Ah, good. I see you, Vic, unfortunately. Okay. So looking, light, laugh, and longevity are the words that you're going to be listening for. Well, you don't, you don't have to listen for them this one because I'm doing something different, okay? I'm going to be doing something different this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you today, I'm just going to give you a concert in poetry, a concert in poetry. I'm going to feature four poems from my second book. Uh, uh, well, actually, it's going to be my it's, it's my second book, but I'm redoing it and adding some stuff to it. So it's actually going to be my book to be. See, my first book was I Found Out I'm Dying, A Celebration of Life. My second one was called Your Name Came to Mind, but I'm going I'm redoing that book with most of the poems and adding some ones, some other ones. And I'm calling it because I want it to be my sequel to I Found Out I'm Dying, A Celebration of Life. This is going to be I Found Out I'm Living an affirmation of life. See, celebration is the, the first one I found that I'm dying. A celebration is the fact that physically we're dying to, from the day we're born. Get over it. So that's like, yeah, I'm celebrating life. Okay. But the next one is I found out I'm living an affirmation. See now, see, that was the physical self, the first one. Now we're talking about the spiritual self because that's the self that's going to live the longest. And that's the self that has the most impact on the world coming from us is that spiritual self, okay? Who you are, how you make people feel. So I'm going to be reading, and, and you know what I noticed? When I looked at my first book of the poems, and how many poems did I have in there? Oh, let me, I just thought of, you know, sometimes that's the thing about research. You think of extra stuff to add to the research. I had 107 poems in that first book. No, those are the pages. So no, it's <laughs> Okay, so I, I had a, got a good 40 to 50 poems in that book. Not one of them had a title that had the word love in them. Wow, yeah, our topic today is love, L-O-V-E, let ourselves value everyone. In my first book, no poem had the topic of love in the title. So what I did is with this one, I looked and I found five poems that had love in the title. And I'm going to share four of those poems with you today. Uh, what I'm going to do is attach one of our L words for the day to each of the poems. And then I'm also going, so that's like, laugh, love. No, like, what was it? Like, laugh, looking, light. I'm sorry, light laugh, looking, and longevity will each be attached to a poem. And then also the words in our theme message today, L-O-V-E, let ourselves value everyone. I want to attach one of those words to each of the poems. And then you're going to see why I did that at the end. Okay. So that's what you're going to get today. It's just a concert in poetry. Okay. So here's the first one. And the first one is the poem is called God's love, God's love. And I'll tell you which letters I'm attaching to that when it's over. <clears throat> God's love. God's love never fails, though we sometimes expect it to. We may sometimes feel incomplete. And in that cavernous place of fantasy, we lose sight of the true light that keeps us afloat. A fantasy that should instead 
invite us to a rainbow of joy where the pot of gold at the end is at the beginning? Or have you forgotten that in the beginning there was the word? And just as the word was good, so too must we believe in our wholeness. And then I make an acronym of the word whole, W-H-O-L-E. Are you W, willing to sacrifice? See, to be whole, you have to be willing to sacrifice. Happy to look success, success in the eye and proclaim the victory. Can you, can you clear out yesterday and today? I'm sorry, can you clear out yesterday and tomorrow to enjoy the H, the here and now of this present? See, to be whole, you have to be willing to sacrifice and you have to be here in the moment. Clear out yesterday and tomorrow. And are you, the O is on, on top of your game. Are you on top of your game where you win because you compete only against yourself? I'm going to read straight through and then come back to them. Do you, L, love yourself? And will the byproduct of your love, self-esteem, bring you closer to the E, everlasting passion and promise of God's love? So W-H-O-L-E, are you willing to sacrifice, willing to look success in the eye and proclaim the victory? Can you clear out yesterday and tomorrow to, hear, to enjoy the H here and now of this present? Are you O on top of your game? Will you win because you compete only against yourself? Do you, L, love yourself? And will the byproduct of your love, self-esteem, bring you closer to the E, everlasting passion and promise of God's love? For it never fails, though we sometimes expect it to, because we cannot understand his power. So God's love, and I attached, the L word that I attached to God's love is light. It's the light. You know, do you see the light in God's love, because when you have God's love working for you, it lights up your insides and it makes things go well for you. Okay. And then I click on, Hey, Zet, you know, that Zet, that's my sister. As long as I'm talking about love and light, I put my sister on there. Okay. But the L is the light. But I, so that's one of the words, but I also attach, what's up, Deborah Joy Hart? Amen. I also attach let in our L O V E, let ourselves value love everyone. Let. See, so you have to let God's light in. God's love is there for you. But remember, it's a voluntary love. It's not an ab abrasive love that says you will love God. It says you should love God. Okay? So light and let attach to God's love. The second poem I'm going to read to you is called, let me put my bookmark in there, it's called Love Equals Peace. And I'm going to tell you the words that I'm attaching to them in advance. I thought that might be good, better. So I'm going to attach the word looking. That's one of the words that was volunteered. And I'm going to attach the O for ourselves to this word, this poem, love equals peace. I can remember loving myself. Actually, it was a long time ago. And I didn't know it was love, but I can remember the day. My steps had more confidence and vigor. And as I glided forward, certain people stepped out of my way. My path was laid in gold and chock full of opportunity. And I, as I skipped ahead, several people helped me stay the path. My smile glistened in, er, in pearly white rays of hope. And as, I ascent, and, and as I enjoyed my ascension, many people returned a smile. My thoughts danced in the comfortable, comfortable blue background of honesty. And as I raced, react, as I faced, I got to start over. I can't, my reading ain't working. And I got on my reading glasses. But you know why? Because in the back of my mind, I'm saying, as before I read this poem, let me say, I wrote this poem back in the 1990s. And it's apply, apl applicable to what we're going through today. Love equals peace. I remember loving myself. Actually, it was a long time ago, and I didn't know it was love, but I remember the day. My steps had more confidence and vigor, and as I glided forward, certain people stepped out of my way. My path was laid in gold and chock full of opportunity, and as I skipped ahead, several people helped me stay the path. My smile glistened in pearly white rays of hope, and as I enjoyed my ascension, many people returned a smile. 
My thoughts danced in the comfortable blue background of honesty. And as I faced reality, a few people said, keep your head to the sky. Upon entering the garden, my walk was upon red carpet. And as I confidently gathered myself to share my blessing, someone told me I was black, poor, ignorant, and I stopped loving me. Yet since I was no longer in love with me, I pushed myself harder to gain knowledge and erase the ignorance. Because I was no longer in love with me, I taught myself to manipulate wealth and erase the poverty. While I was no longer in love with me, I reminded myself to love you and embrace the beauty and strength it takes to be me. So once again, my path beckons my walk. It will be a long walk, surrounded with happiness, content, and wonderment. And as I ease on down the road, everyone encourages me. So I walk in peace. See, when I slowed down and reread that, without thinking where my mind wanted to take it, I was able to get through it. Love equals peace. And that's why I attach the words looking and ourselves. We have to look within so that we can find the love and the peace that shines through us. And it connects to that light in the first poem. And then and what I left out in that first poem is it's so important to believe in yourself. You know, see, that's the light. You have to believe in yourself and you have to let yourself believe in you because you'll get a lot of people who don't believe in you. And sometimes the only reason they don't believe in you is because they don't believe in themselves. And they may not be able to see who you really are because they only see the surface part of you. So you don't really even have to be mad at them, which you have to be as patient with yourself and recognize that as you start to see yourself better, your light will shine and hopefully they'll see it. If they don't, that's okay. They weren't meant to see it. But love equals peace. Look inside. And that's why the O, it's ourselves. We have to let ourselves look inside and find that peace. And so the next poem is called Life, Love, and Laughter. And these last two put together give me a big, a, a really great laugh. This first one um, was one that I wrote, Life, Love, and Laughter. It's a, a poem I wrote for a group of third graders. I was, I was speaking to a third grade class. And similar to the way I'm having us do the word bank, put words in the, in the feed if you want it in the poem, I had them give me words. And so then I created the poem to send back to them to thank them for their time. You know, and, and think about it. now at that time I was in my 40s and it's, it's a third grade class, but they love being co-authors as well. But here's the funny memory I have from them. I was in Chicago at the time. And so I'm talking to this class. And again, I'm going to bring us back to current day. I'm talking to a class of a class full of full class. I think they were, if they weren't all African-American kids, they were predominantly, maybe there was one Hispanic kid or something like that, but I'm pretty sure everybody in there was. And so I'm talking to them and I, and I said, for instance, you know, I don't remember what I was talking about, but I said, for instance, who knows somebody from Iowa? And a lot of the hands <laughs> went up and then I had to catch myself. See, you have to remember where you are. I was in the Midwest. I was in Chicago. I was in Illinois. Plenty of them had family in Iowa. And I said, so I, I, I pivoted. I said, right. I said, now, who knows somebody in New Jersey? And then nobody's hands went up. <laughs> I remember cracking up laughing at myself in that moment. But that isn't, see, isn't that what our world is about? Sometimes we just don't understand because we're someplace else. If I had been in New Jersey, and said, who knows black people in Iowa, no hands would have gone up, right? But I was in Chicago. And when I said it, plenty of hands went up and you'll find it because they had relatives there. And so that's why I said, well, how about in the New Jersey? And they didn't have a clue about New Jersey. That's the key with us today. See, sometimes the disagreements, the, the misunderstanding we have is because of the one fact that I think is true. You cannot be in someone else's shoes. You know, you can't, put, I've never been in your shoes, but I sat in your row because we're all going through something. So 
So I'm attaching the words to this one, laughter, because it cracked me up when I even think about it. But also Iowa and New Jersey. But value, value is connected to this one because I have to value the lives of these third graders. Right now, people, you know, the chant is Black Lives Matter. You know what? I'm ready to say third grade lives matter. And I'm not knocking anything. I'm not being flippant with my tongue or anything. But you know what? Third grade is where they start to make the difference. The school systems is where they start to make the difference of how kids progress. That's why they have the, the, the um, reading. And this may not be true anymore, so any of you teachers can let me know. But it used to be the third grade reading scores had a big impact on where the child was going in their in their lives. OK, so uh, and I and I found that out from when I was doing the Why Readers program. And, and so therefore they showed that research why it was so important because it went the, the it was a summer program that I was doing and these were second graders rising to third grade and that's why they were having the summer school for, for the reading for them so that they could do better on their reading scores and that was what they showed when they when they put the program together was how important that third grade reading score was to them so third grade lives matter so this poem, is written through them and they get and I, you know i can't point out the words that they gave me but i, but I think you'll hear it. and it's called life love and laughter life is so sweet love is beautiful laughter is fun yet it is the opportunity to help people that makes my life so special that makes my love so rewarding that makes my laughter so important because my joy helps people get closer to God. I'm talking about the important people, my family, teachers, and friends, my grandparents and cousins in Minnesota, Tennessee, New Orleans, Mississippi, Chicago, and all the people in all the places. I enjoy seeing smiles on all people's faces because life is real good. In fact, it's as good as honey. So whenever I'm feeling down, I just tickle myself so I can laugh and love because life can really be funny. So a couple of things in there, you heard some of the places where they had relatives, but also I had to write that poem at a third grade level so that they can receive it and feel special about who they were. And then they could also hear, oh, wow, that was the word that I had um, you know, volunteered and they could now become my co-authors. Always know that we are, you are working on your legacy, whether you know it or not, or, you know, consciously, or whether you believe or not, but you are working on your legacy. So that was just a wonderful thing that I had. And then, and then I wrote a note in there. It says, um, what do you think about now? See, this, those are third graders, but what are you thinking about now? One day, each of the um that these third graders will silently thank the educators who played a key role in their lives, but they won't know where to find them. Likewise, I don't know where to find Mr. Rush. Some of you from PS 125, you remember Mr. Rush and you also remember Miss Monroe. She's even one of my Facebook fan, friend, Myrna Monroe. Uh, uh, oh, do we call her Myrna? No, it's not, not Myrna, that's Zet's word. Um, what was, what's Miss Monroe's real name? Y'all know. Um, Okay, think about it. Okay, but this is where I was glad to give a shout out to my teachers. Okay, Mr. Mur Mr. Rush, Miss Monroe, Mrs. Land, or Father Farrell. Those are four impactful teachers in my life. Yet in sharing my gift with those who continue in the education field, I thank my past teachers through my appreciation for them who now for them who now carry the passion to cultivate young minds. I encourage you, teachers to thank a te and new parents, to thank a teacher today for the teacher you gave fits and now can appreciate. All right. So Mona, that was Miss Monroe's. That's Miss Monroe's first name. So we and I, I remember telling her, we used to always say Mona behind your back, but now that we've grown. She said, oh, I would have loved y'all to call me Mona. <laughs> All right. So thank you, teachers, and especially the teachers who had to suddenly go through go from teaching in a class to teaching virtually as the school year is not ended for everybody. It's a, it's, it, it's a high calling on your life and you making the adjustment. So the words again for uh, life, love and laughter, I did laughter, but also value. There's value in our teachers and there's value in making sure we get an education 
to our third graders because it's impacting the way they're going to move on with their lives. So the final poem is called Love's Merry-Go-Round. And the two words that go with this one, first, longevity. Longevity. And then one of the reasons I attached longevity to this is because that first, that, that last poem was to third graders. This one I wrote through the eyes of my seasoned citizens in Chicago. So we go from third graders to people who are in their 60s and 70s and 80s. And that's who I wrote the love merry-go-round one for. And that also has the E in love. And that's for everyone. Because this message is for everyone. Love's merry-go-round. You say tomato, I say tomato. You say love, I say love. You say below, I say above. What would life really be like if we were all on the same page? If as passengers, we saw no reason to turn or change the scenery because straight is good enough. What if we were all on the same page? You say dais, I say dais. If as observers, we appreciated only the opulence of the mountain with no regard for the trees, the sky and the clouds that provide its majesty. Or as thinkers, we settled for the theory of least resistance, agreeing that there are no options, no alternatives, no need to consider one more route. Oh, I say route, you say route. Would you only jump out of a plane in a designer parachute? You see, our tastes are all the same, namely different. Your opinion doesn't have to mirror mine. So when dealing with a subject as complex as love, Agreeing that we may disagree is simply fine. By the way, do you like red or white wine? See, love is in every relationship, each activity, all we undertake and do. Love can easily be seen as fleeting, just as easily as it's felt as true. It's a noun, a verb, it's an adverb, the most misused used word in the English language. Its meaning evolves as daily as life unfolds. We believe in love when it's new. We question it when it's old. Yet one thing we can agree on is that love belongs to our senses. We see it, taste it, hear it, smell it, touch it. We feel it, each of us in a different way. <clears throat> and we can all agree that love goes up and love comes down. The beauty is that it does it again with new passengers, like a merry-go-round. You say neither, I say neither. What's important is that you say what you feel. Love belongs to our senses, and to each of us, it's as different as it is real. And so those four poems, we put them together, and that was to the season, but to the season citizen. But the reason I do is so that we use longevity because it's my season citizen. But it's also talking about the now normal that we're hearing. Things have to change, and think things change, and you have to be willing to embrace embrace the change. Let it go. There's nothing new under the sun. Love's merry-go-round. What do you love now? Who do you love? Because you love based on who you are, and you make sure you love yourself, and more importantly, you make sure that you like yourself so that you can share a full package of who you love to who you love, all right? But also I give it the word everyone because you have to let go of the past. The things that have happened, it's even in that sentence, they have happened. You have to let it go. So the person who you love, the relationship that didn't work, let it go. Don't keep holding on to the anger of that relationship. He or she messed up my life. He or she broke my heart. No, he or she was an important part of you finding out who you are. And they didn't kill you. And especially if you were in an abusive relationship and you finally realized that you needed to get out of it. So many people are going through so many things. But here's what I wanted to show you, what I prepared for you, and I want to put it in the chat. I took each poem, I took God's love, and I added it to light. Oh, let me go on and show you what I did to it. Because the, the, at the end, I, I put them together and I made it into one sentence because we got L-O-V-E, let ourselves value everyone. So what, if you look in your comments right now, you'll see how I put, put it into a, one sentence that can put us together. God's love equals peace life and laughter 
on Love's Merry-Go-Round. So though, you know, so you what you'll see is, you know, if you remember up in the top, you've got the, the real full names of the poem. The first poem is really called God's Love. The second poem is Love Equals Peace. The third poem is Life, Love, and Laughter. And the fourth poem was Love's Merry-Go-Round. And so I took them, so you can see I took them apart, gave them the L-O-V-E, and then turned it into one wonderful sentence. Oh, I didn't hit enter so that you can see what I'm talking about. Here's how it looks when you put it all together. Okay, God's love equals peace, life, and laughter on love's merry-go-round. And that's our message for today. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Hey, Christine Marie, good to see you over here from my AATH family. But as y'all can see over there in the, yeah, see, I, I figured out how to put that in a chat because on this platform that I'm on, I can't write answers in the chat. All I can do is click on and, and uh, show your comments like, you know, blessed are the crazy lead for they shall let in the light. <laughs> Oh, and I had to put that up there. Jeff Joy Hart, blessed are the crazy lead. And see, we can make that lead be LED for light, okay? So they shall be they shall be let in the light. And that's what you have to do. You got to let the light in. And what does Vic said? Live and let live. Such a wonderful cliche and such a hard thing to do. Because we live in a very judgmental world and we live in judgmental skin. And I think it's important that we do. Uh, one of my prayers every day is that I can become less judgmental because I know I'll never make it to being non-judgmental. Woo! Whoa! Sport of your judgments? Yes, I am. And so you hear it. Here's what you have to look at. Judgment is when you just decide. For instance, don't most of us like the term, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? Most of us like that term and are happy to live by it. But that's a judgmental term. Because what it's saying is, once you scam me, the next person I see that starts to scam me that way, I'm going to recognize the scam and I'm going to now shut that person out. In other words, I'm going to judge them as a slickster because they reminded me of how you scammed me. So that's why I said, so all of us, and, that, and it's a good thing to do. You have to protect yourself, but that's judgment. Here's where I say we can try to be less judgmental recognize that I'm judging this person based on someone else and say, okay, okay, that was just my instant wall going up. But I know this is not that person. I don't have to decide I can't trust them just because of someone else. Let me go around that wall and get to know this person for who they are. So that's becoming less judgmental. Being willing to not let the wall stay there once you decide that this person reminds you of someone else and they have nothing to do with that other person and what's going to happen to you. But we've learned. So fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Right. See? And so it's a judgmental thing. So that's why, excuse me, I think it's an important thing for us to have. Okay. Hey, what's up, Holly? And so again, that if you didn't see my commercial, the reason I've got on my red is because I was talking about love, but also because today is Friday. And in the military, there's a, ce a celebration. It's a silent celebration. It's called Red Friday. And uh, Red is R-E-D. Remember everyone deployed. We, they still need your prayers. The people who are, who are currently deployed. Deployment does not mean that they have to be in a war in Afghanistan and Iraq in poverty. They are away from home and away from their family. So they remember those people who were deployed, but also remember that the family is deployed too because the separation. So let's continue to pray for our service members and their families, especially imagine if someone was dealing with a situation when COVID hit and, and it was a single parent had a household and, that, and, and the, the other parent was supposed to come back and now they couldn't come back. And then that changed the dynamics of what was going on in the family, because now you also have a health risk to worry about, to add to your separation. Hey, everybody, everybody's going through something. It's a tough thing. But as you go through, please stop and give yourself credit because you are going through. You have a track record that says you're a survivor. Keep that track record flowing. So today is Red Friday. Every Friday is Red Friday. Just like every day should be a day of love. L-O-V-E, let ourselves value everyone. Coming up on Monday is 
catch check in check 22. Now check 22 is 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 actually a um a campaign by my South Carolina Army National Guard and they may celebrate it other places around the country but the statistics show that 22 veterans take their lives by suicide every day. So that's what South Carolina Guard does and uh led by one of my good buddies uh um Chris Allen it's a check 22. We check in on with one another on the 22nd of every month to confirm that everything is okay and that we haven't taken our life by suicide and we're not considering taking our life by suicide or we need help because we may be thinking about it. See how that cycle just never stops? So you check on your friends right now because some people are not dealing with the quarantine well. And how do you, you don't know whether or not they've decided that suicide uh, may be a way for them to go. It's a lot going on, everybody. But also on the 22nd coming up, it's cut the umbilical cord day because that's my sister Zet. That's her birth date. She'll be 64 on June 22nd. <laughs> So we'll be twins for two months because my birthday isn't until August 27th when I'll hit 65, Medicaid, uh, Medicare, okay? And so, but we'll be the same age for two months. So June 22nd, Sunday. And uh, if you're on her Facebook page, and even if you're not, you know what? She's going to have a Facebook live party on Monday. Yeah, I'm shouting it out, okay? So, <laughs> so look, there's just, again, it becomes another thing that you can celebrate. So keep celebrating. There she is. All right. So on the 22nd, check 22 and check my, you know, my veterans, but check also my sister. But love yourself, everybody. Let ourselves value everyone. Every single one of us has value. And thank you because you make a difference in my life. Again, if you want a letter, especially if you're in the broadcast, you want to let uh, be a co-author on Monday's message, which will begin with the you. Um, um, no, um, that I was, yeah, glue, G L U. Yeah. Understand. So understand is going to be the message on Monday. If you want a word that begins with the letter U, put it in the feed and, um, and I would say Callie, <laughs> put it in the feed and I'll get you in as a co-author. Thank those of you who put the, uh, the L words in today. I hope they connected to your poems well. And uh, and and be on the lookout. I'm going to let you know. Oh, my book. This book will be coming out July 10th, actually, to celebrate my 10 year anniversary as being physically here in Charlotte. June 1st, I became a resident of North Carolina because I signed my lease. But I lived my last month in, in Chicago in June before I physically moved down here in July. And I arrived on July 10th. So that will be my 10 year anniversary. And that's when I'll have my new book ready. And, and so you'll get announcements of that because I'm doing a lot of new things to really help myself and my business go forward. I appreciate you for helping me do the same. Thanks again. God bless you and have a safe, strong end because weak is not what we are. <laughs> Over and out. I'm going to go run through and do some shout outs. Okay, let's see who we got there. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you, Holly. Unstoppable. And if you look at my formula, when I go through, when I put, I'll put a love on anything that's going to be one of the words. That's how I use that to remind myself to look that word up. So that's going to be good. All right. All right. Zet, that embrace can go with Vic's excellence for, for next week for the E word. I will continue to apologize to the love of my life. Every remember everyone deployed. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Oh, okay. You know what? That's beautiful. Holly is married to a, a sailor. And, and I met them at a program. Is it two years ago or three years ago? And now that that becomes part of my family. And so, uh, you know, I definitely remember her husband. Uh, every, every, uh, remember everyone deployed. Is he still deployed, Holly? Um, and uh, but also, you know, uh, to you and your family, I, I appreciate you. Oh, there it is. My husband has dealt with this from me because of my ex. OK. Oh, OK. OK. Oh, oh, you're talking about the judgmental. See, I didn't even see the feed. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you for saying that. Yeah, see, sometimes we we let the last, you know, there's a poem I have called Baggage Claim, and all of us have baggage, all of us. You know, there's something in our past that we carry over to the next relationship. Don't say that you don't, you do. But the key is, can you recognize it and minimize it immediately so that you can get to stopping it? Because it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. And sometimes it's a reflex that we're not even aware of until somebody brings it to our attention. They're like, mm, thank you. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> and that becomes a thing. That's it. Hey, thank you, Christine Marie. Yeah. Christine Marie, somebody, you know, I met her. She's in one of my laughter partners at the uh, AATH. So it's good to see you. And she's a nurse. Aren't you a nurse, Christine Marie? I hope that's my right, Christine Marie. Or, or this, or is that my cousin Christine Marie? I got options now. Woo! I got two Christine Maries in my life. Didn't think about that till now. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Blessed are the crazy. Okay. I saw that one already, so I think I'm pretty much scrolled up and through. Cool. Cool. Okay. No, he is where he is. What he is trucking and reserves. Okay. Good. Thanks, Holly. Glad glad to know it. Glad to know it. All right, y'all. Take care. I was glad to be able to share in the feed with y'all today. See some new technology. Duo hands, du duo mouses. Ghost 40, ghost 40. Oh, I'm out of here, y'all. Take care. Ciao.